think I've got some eggs in the coop. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk about the mistakes that I made with Luna and feeding her. And I can't tell you how stupid I feel. And I know that's strong, <laughs> maybe for some people. But I really made just, it just seems obvious now, looking back, how um, I... I, I can't believe I made this mistake. So when Luna was pregnant at the end, she was very, she had a very large udder. And I mean, it was massive, like huge, huge, huge udder. Like a, you know, like a, look like a, you took a cow's udder and put it on a sheep, you know? So um, after a few days, after she gave birth, I noticed her udder was getting smaller and I thought, well, maybe it's because these are Shetland crosses. They're not full East Frisians. They're not as big. Maybe they're not as drinking as much. Maybe she didn't need all that milk, but they're triplets. Okay. There's three of them. So I'm sure that the extra one adds up <laughs> to plenty. Um, and I was thinking that the, the really nice, quality second cut that we have here. So here, let me, some of you will know this and, and, and not need this explanation and some of you will. So this is some first cut. That's not that great. And this is some pretty yummy second cut. And this smells lovely. It smells like grass. We have a separate shed where we keep, um, the second cut or we did this year or this past <clears throat> fall, we loaded that up. Um, and this is more affordable first cut that is gotten a bit sun bleached too. So it's not looking so good. And the sheep um, will eat this, but they don't love it. And they will, a lot of it will become bedding. Um, and they, d they don't eat some of the straw like pieces. And um, it's just not as yummy or nutritious. And this is really really yummy they absolutely love the second cut it's better nutrition as miss luna is demonstrating how yummy it is um and the little lammies down here eating some <clears throat> so i am a first year farmer for sheep um farming in general um i am first generation um if you don't count like my great, great grandparents, my parents didn't farm. Um, my grandfather did grow up on a farm, um, but I didn't get to see any of that life. That was a long time ago. And he grew up, um, I think in a very humble way. I think, um, I don't know if it's true that they had dirt floors. Um, and he tell he told me that there were, he had slept in the attic and there were um, holes where snow could drift through and he had to heat like cast iron irons in the fire to put under his bed to stay warm at night. <laughs> um, that's probably true, but that sounds crazy to, um, to someone who, who was born in 1990 and not the early, earlier 1900s. Um, I don't remember the exact year that he was born. I think it was close to 1930. So, um, I, I don't have, um, a lot of, you know, history with farming and, and knowledge. So, um, I have to kind of rely on my mentors that I've purchased my sheep from. So I have my Shetland sheep mentor, which is Nadine of Painted Null Farm. And I have, um, Alyssa, from fairy tale farms here in Vermont. And that's where Luna was born. And I reached out to her and I said, I noticed that Luna's, uh, her, her teats, um, were looking a little rough. I noticed that the lambs were really aggressively pounding her udder to try and get more milk. And I was concerned that they were damaging her teats and I sent her some pictures and I, I asked her for, you know, what, what's going on? Do you have any advice? And so she listed a couple of things. Um, Luna has been an amazing mom. 
Um, she is caring for the triplets all on her own. I don't have any bottle babies and I can't tell you how much I don't want bottle babies. My joke is that I have my own baby. He might be two, but he's still my baby. And, um, I'm responsible for him and she can be responsible for her own, her own lambs. So, um, I didn't realize that the, the feed that I was giving her wasn't enough nutrition for her to have enough milk supply and to feed triplets. And so unfortunately, um, her supply was getting s smaller and she was struggling to have enough milk for them. And I didn't know that I had to give, I really, she had to have grain. I thought that the second cut hay is really good stuff. It's, it's really great, but apparently not enough. And now, you know, I'm still learning. Um, and so I don't know, are there any East Frisian, um, dairy sheep, um, are there any shepherds, shepherdesses out there come across this that are more experienced with East Frisians that only feed hay? I'd love to hear that and how that works and how much um, they need um, if they could be only grass fed or do they really have to have grain? All I know is that Luna did because the first, um, right after... Um, Alyssa told me I could give her utter a massage. I could give her a, a few hours break from the lambs. Um, and then she mentioned about the feed and am I giving her grain? And I was like, no, I'm not giving her grain. I'm just giving her um, the second cut hay. And I thought that would be enough because it's enough for the Shetlands. Now the Shetlands are a hardier breed. They are just made of different stuff. They are more primitive. They can forage better and they don't need the pampering that Princess Luna needs. And so, yes, Luna, for me and the fact that she has triplets, my East Frisian dairy sheep needs grain. Come on, Luna. to go drink some. Hmm? Okay. You got a little milk mustache, don't you? My pretty girl. It's time to clean the barn. 
First thing I need to do is get all of the ewes and the lambs out. And I'm showing you this makeshift divider I made with a cattle panel and a plywood board. I also needed to feed the chickens. I thought you might like to see them. This is the coop that I built from Rough Milled Lumber last year. It is a rough chicken coop, but it is a good one. It works well. So before I could put the lambs out, I needed to fix the cattle panels. Last year, I had the same issue and I haven't had time. I'm showing you the twine that I'm going to use. I used garden twine, cotton, or jute. I ended up using a combination. I think I ended up even using some baling twine. So what I'm trying to show you now is just how I'm making do with what I have. Ideally, I would replace these cattle panels with something that um, doesn't need to be rigged every season to keep the lambs in. Um, these cattle panels just have a hole that is too large so the lambs can jump out and then you know if I'm not home to put them back in that could be a dangerous situation so this is a makeshift way to tie up those holes I did this last year it worked just fine um, and one day I would like to replace these cattle panels with something else that would be um, a more appropriate fit for sheep. <laughs> Where'd mommy go? Mom? Where'd you go? There's mom. You're too funny. Where's Luna? Hi. Arnold. Harold. Connor. All my pregnant Shetland ladies over there. I often show the positive side, the pretty side of having sheep. I don't often show the hard work, the gross stuff, the poop, the labor, the smell. You can't, you just be grateful. You can't smell what this barn smells like right now. <laughs> but I wanted to show some of the realities behind sheep. It's hard work. And it's not easy. I did all of the front of the barn. I did a lot of the stalls. And then I had to have a break. So it looks like it's a little ram lamb. Um, I have not dipped his umbilical cord. It, it looks like I will cut it a little bit and dip it in iodine. Um, he's only a little wet at the back. He's mostly dry and it looks like he's, you know, nursing already before I came in. 
At least he's, if he hasn't, he's working hard at it, so that's a good thing. And I put mom in the stall alone with her lamb. I think, I think it's just going to be a single ram lamb. Speaking of chickens, this is Cookie, my barred rock, and some of my other chickens. And here are some eggs that I've collected to hatch for the first time. I just bought the most expensive dozen eggs I've ever bought. $30 a dozen. <laughs> and I'll show you why. Um, I just got a brand new Nurture Right 360 incubator from our local um, farm store. And I collected some of my own eggs and I purchased some uh, more eggs from another farm to hatch. So I'm gonna show you those. And I wanna just say my kitchen is under construction um, and it hasn't, um, I haven't finished painting and it's just kind of a mess and I feel a little bad about that, but um, I still wanted to record this. So um, let me show you the eggs. So first we're gonna look at my eggs. 
and my eggs are pretty clean but they're not perfect so i have organized them so these four here are cream leg bars crossed with my rhode island red rooster and i'm gonna um, only say that once because i only have one rooster so all of these are crossed with rhode island red so these are probably going to make a green egg with any hens that are <laughs> hens that are hatched these are green queens, I believe. They are really large to jumbo eggs, and they almost appear kind of gray sometimes. There's a heavy bloom on them, which is just an outer coating. And then these four are my olive eggers, and uh, she's definitely um, a black copper Moran's mix. Um, you could see just her coloring looks very much like a black copper Moran's and she and they're a little speckled oh, if you could see the speckles they're there so i'm going to wash these first because they're a little cleaner and then these are the expensive 30 30 dollars for a dozen um these are true blue eggs and they are really dirty and kind of gross and this is why i'm doing the method where you wash them before you incubate them and I need to mark my blue eggs as well um, so the cream leg bar blue and these um, true blue whiting eggs they the color is similar enough that um, I don't want to forget which one's which so I'm just gonna let these soak and gently kind of wash any um, dirt it could be poop off most of these are really clean a couple of them are a little smeared okay now in the other sink which i don't think you could see the angle is hard to get i've got a bowl with some of that peroxide and so i'm mm -hmm. gonna just take my egg and dip it and roll it gently in that bowl of peroxide and then lay it in the clean pyrex dish try not to let it roll and these um i've been collecting over a few days don't touch please what the? that's peroxide okay um i've got a little hack and I found this tip on another YouTube channel. I'll put the title of their channel here. But um, I don't keep this house uh, warm enough as per the directions for the incubator. So it's supposed to be at least 72. And we are trying to save money on heating our home. It's extremely expensive this year and last year it was expensive as well so we are keeping the temperature down and it just doesn't make sense to crank the furnace um, to try and incubate eggs so my solution is to use something I already have for the chickens and that is this plate this heater plate right here I think this is a producers pride is the brand it's got two settings it is for brooding and uh, the first year I think I used just the lamp with the bulbs um, and then the next year I upgraded to this and I have both if I need them um, this was really gross I cleaned it and wiped it down with um, Lysol wipes or Clorox wipes so um, this is just going to help stay warmer in this space and the pantry might not seem like the best place but this really is because it's out of the way there is a baby gate that prevents little fingers from getting in here and dogs and cats and um it is there's no windows in here there's no draft in here um i turn the light out it's darker in here so 
Um, out of all the places in our house, this is really the best place. And it's winter outside, so there's, I can't do it in the garage or the basement. It's just way too cold. So um, all that said, let's get these eggs in the incubator. And yeah, let me know if you use this tip. Um, I've got it on the lower setting right now. Um, I don't have a thermometer in here. I really should do that um, just to test the temperature right in this space. And I don't think this is as, as um, ideal as the the hack that the, um, or the secret tip she called it, um, was um, to use a uh, heating pad. And I did not want to spend money on a heating pad. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't have time to special order one um, because the heating pad that I have has a two hour timer. And so it'll automatically shut off after two hours. And if I wanted one that doesn't do that, I'd have to spend a bunch more money. And I already own this. So my two year old uh, protesting about being stuck out, out there. So let's get these eggs in the incubator. What are you doing? 